Hello everybody, for today's video I've got a pair of Brooks Brothers split toe derbies in pretty good condition that I thrifted for 10 bucks. Although they need attention on the tips of the toes and the heels. So let's see what we can do with these things uh, and put some toe taps on them, okay? So let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of my five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cord. Here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. All right, guys, let me show you what I picked up here today. Um, let me flip the camera around and I'm going to show you uh, what I got. I'm going to show you how I know that these shoes are actually Allen Edmonds. Uh, and I'm going to show you also what they need. We kind of have a little bit of a unique challenge here today. OK, so let me turn the camera around. Now you can see here the shoes actually say Brooks Brothers. Now, the reason I know these are Allen Edmonds is number one, I know Allen Edmonds and, and Alden have made shoes for Brooks Brothers, but the key is uh, made in USA of fine imported materials, as well as this insole. And uh, you see the those broguing holes around that, that sock liner. Um, and then also here the way it says Goodyear welted. Uh, this is kind of interesting. This is called a combination tapsole. So it's a leather sole with rubber on it. This is not a topi or also known as a rubber protective half sole. Uh, they came this way. And you know that because you can see the stitching. Um, so here, oh, by the way, let me show you another pair of shoes with the same style insole from Allen Edmonds. Here's a pair of Allen Edmonds Shreve Ports. Beautiful cap toe derby with woven leather. And you see what I'm talking about? Oh, there the logo goes this way on these. It's a little bit worn down. That used to be in gold, but the Shreveport. But the point is, do you see the, you know, identical, right? So that uh, of fine uh, imported materials and the amino, you know, all those factors are kind of the giveaway. Um, now you can see here, these come with Allen Edmonds shoes. Typically you do not get a leather rubber combination sole unless you get the Shell Cordovan models. But, so this is a little bit higher elevated. This is worn through the leather. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do about this. I would like to keep it as a leather rubber dovetail, so I haven't decided yet. And I think the challenge with this, what I'm thinking, I, I don't know if I can do it or not, is just peel off this rubber part here, use some of my stock rubber, and just cut out any rubber piece, keep the leather. I, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm going to look into that. Now the soles are not in bad shape. You can see it's worn into the stitching here a little bit on the outside but there's still a decent amount of rubber left, right? So you can still see where the tread was and it's not that worn is what I'm saying, just at the tip. So, you know, people walk differently. Um, and, uh, um, you know, for one of my recent videos, I'll link in the description, uh, is you just shoe fitting with the master Allen Edmonds shoe fitter, Brian Pearson. He says this can happen. Um, it can be because of your gait. It can be because shoes are too long or too short can cause that the excessive toe wear and it's on both shoes. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I think I'm going to make my own and install a pair of toe taps and that's pretty rounded. So what I don't know is if I cut into that, sand it, if there's going to, if I can get rid of that round, that, that round down. Um, so I'm going to, but you know, flush them in as I think what I'm going to try and do here. So, um, again, $10 and 66 cents with tax. This is an ideal kind of shoe to, you know, try these kinds of things on. I have not installed a set of toe plates before. Um, I have some brass stock. I'm going to make my own, um, but this is an ideal shoe because if it works, you know, it's a nice enough shoe to, you know, I don't want to put toe taps on a, you know, crappy bonded leather sole shoe, but it is the same time. They're cheap enough. If I screw it up, you know, um, I'm out 10 bucks. So, um, I'll show you the stock material that I'm going to use. So here's what I got. Uh, this is brass bar stock from, from the company's McMaster car, McMaster car. Uh, McMaster.com is our website. This was a one foot long bar, uh, one inch wide by one sixteenth inch thick, uh, one sixteenth inch thick, 60,000 of, of an inch is about a millimeter and a half. And this was about $12. Um, now then I've also got, uh, you can see here, brass screws. These are actually flat head. You see the, the, the head is flat, right? These are number four. These are number six. Number six is slightly bigger. Now these are solid brass screws. They're each a half inch long. Um, and this is a countersinking tool, okay? Now the reason I have this, can you see the bit angle? You see here on this standard drill bit, this is 135 degree or 118, but this is 135. Do you see how this angle is much more shallow on this countersinking tool? The reason for that 
And you can see I did cut out a couple brass, solid brass toe plates here, right? So the reason for that is so that when you get the screw in there, in the hole, then you get the countersink to match that of the screw angle. Otherwise it's the wrong angle and it doesn't sit in there very well. Does that kind of make sense? So that was kind of the objective. Um, so you can see here, this is the bigger number six bigger number six screw kind of sticks up a little bit. I think I'm going to go with number four. Uh, the number fours would be flush with the surface. The number six is just a bigger head. Um, I think it's going to stick up too much. I'm not sure if I could deepen the hole a little bit, maybe, and get that to fit, maybe. Um, I'll play around, the, with, play around with it a little bit more. That's, I don't think I want them sticking up. I think I'm just going to go with the number four. So then I think the next step is going to be decide exactly where I want them to place them on there. Man, this is going to be rough. It's really not thick enough. I think I'm still going to have a rounded toe. Ah, I don't know. Um, I think I'm going to go for it and see how it turns out and see what happens. But it's not going to be ideal. You see, man, that is really rounded, but oh well. Uh, so I'm going to trace around that and uh, start cutting it in. Okay, so it is a complete separate piece. I think I can duplicate that. So I've traced the shape. Now remember, this is the outside. This is the outside. So it, it's symmetrical, it really shouldn't matter, but you know, just gotta keep that in mind. And I'm gonna cut this out because I wanna get exact on that part. I'm gonna use a Dremel cutoff. This is like a Dremel cutoff tool. Here we go. It's a lot of hand fitting. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. It is thicker. I think that'll work. There's the second one. Got a little faster and better at it. Those corners, man, those radiuses are the hard part, as well as getting the distance from there to there the same.
so I've got them laid out. Let me try. This is a little bit of my dilemma here. Um, so if you put the shoes this way, you, you see the lettering here and the top of the heel. So if I consider, in other words, the, the center line of the shoe is like this, but you know, is the center line of the shoe here or here? I'm going to say it's here. And therefore, I think that really means the toe plate should be kind of lined up on that center line. You see what I'm saying? So there's a little bit of a compromise. If I make it completely parallel here, then it kind of seems crooked on the toe. So I kind of try to compromise a little bit. I don't know if that even made sense, but this is harder than it looks. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting on that one. So there's kind of what I have. Man, there's still a, it's just a little bit too worn. <sighs> That's not bad. I'm going to sharpen that edge up with the knife a little bit, but I mean, that, that's not bad. Man, not sure. Maybe I can, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I can fill that after. Eh, it's not ideal. It's not ideal. I wonder if I can fill that toe piece there with something after this is done. Remember, this is not a how-to video, okay? I'm trying to figure this out. This is my first time doing this. So I sanded on the backside. I test fitted it. I assume these things get glued as well. Standard master, all-purpose cement. Same thing the pros use for gluing soles and stuff on. Let's get a nice coating. And hit that edge a little bit too. Get that set up.
right guys, here's where I'm at. Now, I've said this before, but um, when I make a how-to video, I label it clearly how-to. When it's not a how-to video, I don't say how-to, and this is not how-to. Um, I'm a firm believer in learning by doing. I'm a big believer in that. And you know, what I'm learning is number one, these toe plates need to be curved a little bit. I didn't show it on camera, but I had the toe plate off the edge of the, the cutting board here and was you know, kind of hammering it to try and add a little, I don't know if you can tell, but add a little bit of a curve to it. Um, that gap that I was talking about is a problem. So I'm debating in my head how to fill that. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with that one. Similar problem here with this one. Um, that gap, he has a little worse on this one. There's more toe wear on this one. That might make it a little easier to see. Um, so I need to fill that with something. I've got some ideas. Um, the gapping, you see I have a little bit more space there than I'd like. So I think what happened was after I curved them, I think it pulled away a little bit. Or maybe I just did a crappy job cutting them. But um, I could have done a better job on getting that screw, uh, you know, perpendicular. You see how the, the head is kind of like higher on that side. So all learning process. Um, here's where the heels are. And where that one heel was worn, I have kind of a little bit of a similar problem. I'm going to need to fill that. That I'm not as worried about. That's just very tiny cosmetic. Um, and kind of have the same situation there. I need to clean that gap out, but you can see what's going on. So... The rubber is a little bit thicker. I know with some of you guys, oh, you should have sanded it. I've tried sanding these things, the belt sander. It just flings away from you and you buzz your fingers and there's just no, you can't get it even. There's no easy way to do that. I maybe should have uh, taken the time to look for some thinner rubber, but then then I get into buying a whole other sheet of something like this just for two pieces like that. Ugh, you know, there's no easy answer with this stuff. Um, well, anyway, like I said, these are an old pair of shoes. These are not, you know what I mean? This is not like I paid $300 for these shoes or, you know, something like that. So anyway, bumbling my way through this, we'll keep going. So here's what I've decided to do to fill those spots as well as a teeny tiny bit on the heels. Uh, I have here from the garage from behind the belt sander, mostly leather dust. I think there might be some rubber dust in there too. Um, in epoxy. Not necessarily the best way. And just threw away a thing of, what do you call this stuff? Country Time, Half Half. It's like one of my favorite drinks, iced tea lemonade. Arnold Palmer. I think that's enough. Retract the syringe a little bit. So you quit getting suction or pressure I should say and then cap it off have some kind of towel around so you can get glue on your fingers mix the epoxy this stuff smells absolutely terrible add a pinch idea how much to add. It's definitely thickening it.
so here they are after a couple rounds of sanding. Uh, I might go a little bit more, it's not perfect. But at some point you just gotta call it quits. That was with uh, a couple different grits. I don't know what this one is. It's probably like 120 and then 220. Little chunk of leather as a sanding block. And I'm gonna color the edges and then wax them next. There they are, dyed. I may fill a little bit more in that one. Yeah, and that one, they need a little bit of filling. Heels look pretty good though. So what I did was I filled in some of those little spots there with this stuff. A cream run of a tree. So this is actually like a scrap, like a severe scratch filler. So let me let me send that down. So I noticed after one round, you still see there's a, both toes still have a low spot. This stuff shrinks when you apply it. So I did a quick sanding on them and I'm gonna fill them again, let them sit overnight. So there's the toes, finished filling and sanding them. And this is, uh, I took a chunk of uh, the Saphir black mirror gloss. Got a coating on there. I like this part. This part is kind of fun. Had a you know, bit of wax on there. Pure polish, cleaner conditioner has definitely set in. I actually left them sit overnight, not because I believe they need to sit that long. You definitely do absolutely need to let them sit for at least an hour per the directions in the bottle, at least an hour. Uh, you shortcut that, you know, they'll be sticky. Um, but, you know, it was just late at night, so. Uh, just watch, actually, this will add some gloss. That's not bad, huh? Look at that. Like I 
I said, there's no, no actual polish on this yet. Now, time for some paste wax. This is pure polish black paste wax. And uh, I like applying it with my fingers. I think you get more product on it because all it's got in it is uh, carnub... What does that say? Let's zoom in here. Um, because all it's got in it is orange oil, carnauba wax, bees wax, coconut oil, and earth pigment. You can use your fingers. It's non-toxic. Good stuff for polish. Andy does not pay me to say that. I like his stuff. Um, probably shouldn't have, uh, well, maybe I, you know, it's all right. Ideally, you'd have the laces out, but these are black laces, black polish, so it's not going to stain the laces, and the uppers are in nice enough shape where, you know, I'm not concerned about having to uh, vigorously polish underneath the laces where the eye stays. Try and go with the wrinkles. Try and drive some polish into them. Don't want to highlight them. And then flip it over, tip of the finger to get down into the welt there. You'll notice that this stuff, I, I think, uh, I forget which part is it. I think it's a coconut oil. I believe Andy says, um, liquefies at like 80 degrees. So when you first touch it, it'll feel kind of uh, hard, a little odd. Then if you get a spot going, you'll notice it softens up and gets easier to use. A little bit more here. Did the other shoe, so it's just been really just a few minutes. Let's see how the uh, shine comes out. And I love using a nice big horsehair brush. finished up. I know you guys uh, that are fans of my channel are going to be absolutely shocked. I did not mirror shine. I did not put a spit shine on the toes. Just didn't feel like it today. You know, these have a nice, what I would call a soft shine. And I think it's a little more, it's, it's a little less desirable when, you know, you don't have a definite definition. It just kind of transitions without any toe cap or seam or anything like that. Now let me show you the handiwork first. They're definitely not perfect, but these are solid brass toe tabs. I did uh, put a little neutral kiwi on the arch of the sole there. Of course you can see a little bit of step in the rubber, but I think it's okay, I'm gonna leave it uh, because it's going to give a little more life to the shoe. Yeah. 
That one has a little bit of a gap on that side. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe and you can actually go to some of my playlists. I've got a lot of different videos on a lot of different subjects. I've noticed that uh, most of my subscribers aren't even seeing all my videos. So if you've uh, missed out, um, it is as of the release of this video, March of 2023. Since um, about October, November, I've been releasing about a video a week, almost without miss. So go back and check out some of my older videos and you may be surprised what you find. Thank you guys so much, God bless you.